So I, I've, you know, I, big part of Gerard's thinking does have to do with sacrifice. And that's kind of what I would call the societal macro community level um, pattern that he recognized, right? Something that happens at the community level. Because when, when a person, when anybody is seeking transcendence, there's sort of something that has to die in order for them to achieve this sort of uh, different quality of being that they're, that they're looking for, right? So that happens at the individual level, but it can also happen kind of at the societal level. And, you know, I've listened to your, your kind of theory on sacrifice. Um, and I know you mentioned Gerard in it, but I'm just curious as to, you know, do, do you think that Gerard's sort of idea of the scapegoat mechanism squares with what you were saying? Um, or do you, do you think it's sort of just like a, a subset of a larger kind of theory of, of sacrifice? That's what I, I think. But I mean, maybe you can help me understand it better for me to change my mind. I'd be fine with changing my mind. But it seems when I look at sacrifice, what I see, the Yom Kippur sacrifice is probably the best version of a sacrifice because it's an atonement sacrifice. It's an, you know, it's an at one minute sacrifice. It's the, the sacrifice that makes us one. And it has two sacrifices as part of it. There is on the one hand, the scapegoat sacrifice that really where you take a goat, you put all your all your evil on it and you kind of kick it out, you abuse it, whatever. And then it falls off a cliff or it runs into the desert to, to be become food for the demon. But then you also have uh, another sacrifice, which is the pure animal, which is sacrificed up towards God. Uh, and what I see in sacrifice, at least in scripture, is those two types of sacrifices, one which would, could be called a scapegoat sacrifice. And you see it in a lot of cultures, you right, sacrificing a prisoner sacrificing, uh, you know, you see they did it even all the way up to Roman times when they would have uh, people fight in the in the arenas. It was basically a, a human sacrifice of their cap, their captives in order to kind of manifest the glory of Rome in, in, in doing it. But then you also have a sacrifice, which I would call a vertical sacrifice, which is giving the best up. And, and when you give the best up, and then that constant that is part of what constitutes the the body. And I've talked about it, like let's say in terms of a sports team. On the one hand, you you do have to scapegoat in the sense that you can't let anybody into your, your sports team, right? You have to eliminate behaviors and players that don't fit into the team. That's necessary. Um, but then you also need to give your intention and your and your will and your best up towards the goal of what you're doing. So that's what I see these two. And so I don't know if Gerard accounts for them with his scapegoat sacrifice, or if he has two theories, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's any conflict between what Gerard is saying and, and kind of what I've what I've heard you articulate, which is just a, simply like the bro a broader view of sacrifice. I don't think Gerard, I think he he identified a very particular kind of sacrifice. And I agree with you that there's all kinds of other sacrifices that don't necessarily fit into the pattern of the scapegoat uh, mechanism necessarily. It's like, for I, sure, I think, him yeah. identifying that has been amazing. I think it's been really oh, yeah. to understand Christianity, but then also to understand the 20th century and to understand a lot of the things that, that we went through, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as Christianity kind of started collapsing as well. Have you thought, has, did Gerard talk about, because one of the things that we say, we, myself and also the people at uh, Lord of Spirits, is we say, you know, Christ is both goats. That is, mm -hmm. in the Yom Kippur sacrifice, Christ seems to be both the sacrifice of the, the one who accepts to be the sacrifice of the stranger outside the city, who takes on the sins, who accepts the blame, all of that. But then he also is something like the sacrifice of the firstborn. And the sacrifice of the firstborn, even in scripture, is not the same as the scapegoat sacrifice. So I don't I don't know. Like I also don't know if Gerard accounts for that idea. Like when when Abraham is going to sacrifice Isaac, it's not a scapegoat sacrifice. He's he's supposed to offer his best up to God. Um, and so I don't know. Yeah, th th these are things that I that I that I think about. But I'm not an. I don't know Gerard well enough to to be able to. Yeah, well, I want to go back to you, your idea of what I like sort of horizontal and vertical sacrificing up triggered an idea. So I want to get, but what you're saying now brings, um, brings up questions like atonement theology that are super complex and we, we don't need to necessarily get into those right now. But 
there is an idea. I think you have to be careful that there is one conception of, of, you know, Christ's sacrifice on the cross is sort of, you know, God needing some kind of blood sacrifice. Right. Yeah. And, I don't see and, it that way either. No, I don't no, like no, that. Either, either do I. Right. And, and Gerard in his earlier days was sort of implying that. And then he befriended this old um, priest. Uh, I shouldn't call him old. I don't know how old they were when he met, but in, in, in Austria, Father Raymond Schwager, who sort of helped Gerard understand the theological implications of what he was saying. And um, I mean, I, I come from just in a very old tradition of Augustine and Aquinas and Gregory of Nyssa and, and Irenaeus and, my, my understanding is that you know God could have achieved the salvation of the world in in, in uh, many many different ways, right? And it ne- needed not be that particular way, but this was a sacrifice of love, right? And in some senses, it was this the most perfect uh, sort of way, but but needed not be that, right? So in other words, it's not like we, you know, we <laughs> chose to uh, like affect what we thought was going to be yet one more effective scapegoat mechanism Mm -hmm. like right and yet it the whole thing was subverted by by the set by the sacrifice of christ on the cross because there was the 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 holy spirit sort of enlightened the 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 minds after the resurrection of a very very small group of christians that for the very first time sort of saw the mechanism that was taking place and saw like what we had brought on ourselves. So it's a big difference by us sort of being responsible for the violence and God being responsible for the violence, right? Mm-hmm. Big, big difference, right? So it, it was the, it's the revelation that we had. So God gave the revelation for us to be able to see the scapegoat mechanism in its fullness for the first time mm-hmm. through the crucifixion. It's not the first time that it was ever... Um, there were never hints of it. I mean, the Old Testament is full of the story of Joseph and his brothers gives us a perspective of what's going on that there's really no comparable for in any other kind of literature. Like we see that Joseph is in, innocent and sort of the victim of the scapegoating through the whole story. It's almost like we we have the, um, the director's cut from the standpoint of, the, of Joseph or something, right? And we know that he's not responsible. For this. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, to, yeah. The, the, but there's, it's hard to sacrifice is one of the hardest things to think about. By the way, <laughs> to be honest, it is so yeah. difficult to think about because it, in some ways, so primordial and so encompassing. But so what? One one of the things you see, I think, this is my my perception also what, of what Christ is doing. One of the things he's doing is that by willingly becoming someone's scapegoat, you could say. He's almost he's kind of flipping or joining the two sacrifices together, where by by in his willingness to die for others, you could say he's turning the scapegoat sacrifice into something like the 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 sacrifice of good odor, right? This idea of like yeah. of the best which is given up. Um, and the reason also why I think that that's happening is because then you see that pattern pattern modeled in in uh, the early Christian martyrs, where the martyrs are basically saying, I'll be your scapegoat. And then that scapegoat will become like a a sacrifice of worship up to God. And it's going to secretly change you without you even knowing what's going on. It's like, if I, if I do that, and I don't, like I tell people, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to die. I don't want to, I don't want people to kill me. I'm not, but but I can see it that that seems to be what's going on. It's like there's a mechanism. It really is like a mechanism where so, self sacrifice seems to be the place where these two sacrifices get joined, and it's like a refounding of reality if you do it properly. I think that's I think that's right, and that's um, there's it this the idea of self self sacrifice is the key to I think understanding right like Christianity. Um, and and what's happening in in the liturgy as well. So um, God willing, you you or I will not have to become red martyrs, blood martyrs, and, and physically, uh, who knows? Um, yeah. And and you know, give up our bodies and blood. But there's what what's happening in the Christian liturgy, in Orthodox and in the West, is is a 
participation in that self-sacrificial act on the cross, right? So it's uh, what they, you know, the early church called white martyrdom, or, you know, it's, it's a, it's still a form of dying to yourself and self-sacrifice that, you know, if you're, if you really understand what's happening, you're sort of uniting your self-sacrifice to Christ's self-sacrifice on the cross, and it's all being offered, offered, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And there's something really beautiful about that. And, and remembering part of a liturgy is, anamnesis it's a remembrance of of you know what is what has happened right it only had to happen once right it doesn't mean that we can't part- continue to participate in it but it's a remembrance of that singular event um and also very importantly a remembrance of i mean this is why you know good friday is so important and i always for me it's always like one of the most I mean, it's the solemn and, and powerful sort of liturgies of the year because it's a rem- remembrance of um, of the scapegoat mechanism and what the pattern of human behavior, it's almost as if we, we keep, we default back to the old rites, to the old sacrificial rites that involve not self-sacrifice, but sacrifice of other people to preserve ourselves. Mm-hmm. So sacri- there's, an, there's an element of like self-preservation in sacrifice. Yeah, of course. Huge yeah, element yeah. of to protect, protect myself. And it's, if that's like my default mode of being, then I will inevitably sacrifice somebody else at the altar of my of myself. So there's an, an aspect of remembering our, our tendency to engage in that kind of behavior and then to see, I mean, every week or every day, right, to, to, to see actually how that's been completely transformed into an act that can be an act of love. Mm-hmm.